Hi guys. Gotta get it out of my system. Gotta get it out of my chest. Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is finally the day that we've been waiting for. Today is the day Louis Tomlinson blessed us all with his brand new second album, Faith in the Future. I'm so excited. It almost doesn't feel real. And I say almost because I already listened to it and I know it's 100% real. And it's also like super good. It's so good, guys. Um, and yeah, I'm also wearing my, oh, fuck, my Louis merch because I'm that bitch. Um, today, in celebration for Louis' sophomore album being released, I decided to do an album commentary. And, you know, I was actually gonna do an album reaction like I did with Midnight's by Taylor Swift. By the way, please check that out if you haven't done so yet. It could help a lot. It's gonna be linked in the description below or the little card corners. I don't know where they are, but yeah, please check that out. That would mean a lot. Um, but I decided against it, actually. Um, uh, because, you know... To do that, I had to wait until the next morning to film with great lighting. And to be honest, I knew I was not going to be able to wait to listen to the album. And you know, I was not going to lie to you guys. So I decided instead I will be doing an album commentary where I could share my thoughts and ideas about the album after I already had a little bit more time with it. And also, I thought this could be way easier to edit because, you know, album reactions are a pain in the ass to edit. But yeah, this is how it's gonna work. We'll be listening to the album song by song, like Besties would, who loved Louis. And instead of me giving my first live reaction, I'm gonna be giving more of a third reaction, as I said before, because I took notes and I'm gonna listen to the album again. But with each song, I will be sharing the thoughts I wrote down. It's more of a likes, ratings, what I thought of each song, you know? Uh, and you know, the first time I heard it, I actually screamed and cried. So maybe that wasn't the best reaction to put on the internet forever, you know what I mean? So maybe I'll end up adding stuff while talking, you know? But I don't know, I feel like this is gonna feel like more of a hangout between besties instead of such of just an album reaction, you know? I don't know if I'm explaining myself, but I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. By the way guys, throughout the video I will be reading my notes, so don't be weirded out by it. It's just lately I've been having a hard time with words and I've been confusing a lot of them. So I want the video this video to be the best. I can, you know, so I I feel like it's gonna be way easier for me to express myself if I'm reading the notes I took while listening to the album. And I hope you don't mind it, but please bear with me. Let's start with the first song on the album, which is called The Greatest. I said you know. Out of 10. This is one of the best opening tracks I've heard in a while, actually. Um, I feel like it really sets the base for what the album is gonna be like, especially when it's your first time hearing it, not just in terms of music and rhythm, but also in lyrics and how meaningful and raw they'll probably be. Uh, it really pulls you in and makes you hopeful that the rest of the album is going to be as good as the first track. There's definitely some violin in there that just ties this whole song together. The lyrics are extremely powerful. And if you know Louis, you know lyrics are his forte. And this song is an absolute proof of that. You can all listen to this song and then call Louis Tomlinson a bad lyricist or artist. Because this song is so good that it's a proof that he can do so good. I feel like this song is a door that opened a new experience for us. As if Louis welcomed us into his new home the home representing his new sound and a much more confident Louis Tomlinson that we haven't seen before. This song is a masterpiece in so many levels. Whether your favorite genre is pop, rock, indie, etc., I know you'll probably enjoy this song because it has so many characteristics that makes it unique in its own way. 
It's a perfect way to start an album, especially if an artist is trying to show a new version of themselves and their work. It feels like a song that would be in a movie where the main characters get together and overcome their hardships of life in a montage or like in the credit scene, you know? And I really mean that in the best way possible. And also the fitting at the end, this part. It's just so good and it really fits this song. I feel like a lot of people don't like fading at the end of songs, but in this case, in this song, I feel like it really fits. That's what I mean by that. This song is so good, guys. And as I said, I think it's just one of the best opening tracks I've heard in a while. I feel like opening tracks should really capture what the album is gonna be like and if you have been keeping up with what Louis says about the album you know this song was actually written to be a tour opener you know and it really fits for that but I think with the album I'm so glad he shows it to be the first song because again it really really fits the next song on the album is written all over your face and can I just say this song reborn me into someone better. This song saved me from the darkness. This song, wow. This song made me scream so much. Yeah, I went insane, insane. So let me read you my notes on this song because I actually have a lot to say about this one. The first thing that I broke down is, oh fuck, where do I even start? And honestly, yeah, where do I even start? Um, This song, this song right here, just wow. The drums, the electric guitar, the hey babe, it's just freaking fire. And it's so weird that I say that because this song literally feels like you've been caught on fire and the only way to save you is this song. His voice just gets you in the mood of wanting to dance around slowly and sexy as if you knew how to do that and I don't. Um, I needed to take some pauses and breathe because I somehow forgot how to do it normally. In this part, a hurricane His line delivery in those two sentences makes me want to scream into my pillow because this song is my new lord and savior. And also this part. When we're finished saying nothing, can we please get back to love and when it's good, it's really something, can we please get back to us now? That burst alone deserves a Grammy. In more seriousness now, this song is a living proof on how versatile Lloyd can be with his voice and sound. This sexy rock punk song lets you know Louis is not here to play and wants to be taken more serious with his music. He's in control now on what he wants to be making and this song definitely suits his voice and aesthetic really well. I hope he chooses this song to be the next single because I feel like it could be something that radio listeners will be captivated by. And I really mean that. I really, really do hope he chooses this song to be his next single because I feel like and throughout this past few days, this has been the song that has people more excited, especially not just fans, but like people outside the fandom. So again, I do hope that he should suggest this to be the next single on the album because it can be a hit song. Like it has everything to make everyone fall in love with Louis. The next song on the album is Bigger Than Me, and we all know that song because it's the first single he released for the album. I didn't read the signs, walking different lives, I know I took a left, trying to make it right. Uh, a lot of people after listening to the whole album were like, why did he choose Bigger Than Me as the first single when 
there's better songs on the album to be singles and I'm gonna get to that but first I will be reading my notes. I remember listening to this song for the first time as I was about to go on a 12 hour road trip to the beach. Yes, a 12 hour road trip. So I downloaded it so I could listen to it on repeat. And before you bring up the streams arguments, I had no internet so the streams weren't going to count anyway. Point is, the song felt perfectly adequate for the start of the LT2 era. This sound was fresh and different from what we had heard from Lily Tomlinson, but it still had some nostalgic elements from his first album. Overall, it's a great tune and I feel like it holds great value to a new start and accepting the changes that might bring. This could have been a great album opener in my opinion, but I'm glad he went with the greatest instead because it feels more appropriate, but this song still feels like a warm welcome hug for this second era. Also, his vocals in the song are insane. I'm really happy he ventured more with his voice and found the confidence to do so because it really fits what the album is going for. And now, what I was talking about in the beginning, it really serves as a transition song from Wells to Faith in the Future, and that's why it worked so well as the first single. And that's what I wanted to touch on, like, Bigger Than Me has some elements from Waltz, and if you listen to it, you can feel it, but it also has this new sound that fits perfectly with Faith in the Future again. So it's like, it serves as a transition song, you know? It's kind of in the middle of the last song he released with Walls and the first song he released with Faith in the Future. So of course it wasn't going to be for a hundred from the beginning. For example, if he would have released Out of My System after the, as the first single, I feel like people would have been more confused because it's just like, it doesn't serve as a transition between Walls and Faith in the Future and Bigger Than Me really does. Yeah. Don't hate on bigger than me or I'll fight you, okay? As you saw, in that little clip of me listening to Lucky again. I love this song so much. And when I first heard the song, let me tell you, it wasn't one of my favorites from the album. But then I had a little bit more time with it. And then I just started analyzing the lyrics for the notes. And I just fell in love with it. It's so amazing. It's so cute. The sound of this song is absolutely breathtaking. I love how it starts with drums and continues on adding instruments being followed up by the guitar. Then the lyrics kicked in and oh my god, my man is a lyricist and I'm so in love with this masterpiece. I love how they bring up the sound for the chorus, then bring it back down for the second verse in a way that feels so natural because they are using more sounds than in the first verse but still has that melancholic lovely vibe to it that makes it feel nostalgic. This song is so lovely and hopeful. There's no better way to describe it. You listen to it and immediately start reminiscing, reminiscing, I don't know how to say that, reminiscing a moment in your life or a love you've never had but you dreamt of having or a movie you watch and you just feel like the song fits perfectly. Like there's no way you listen to the song and an image didn't pop up in your head. There's simply no way you don't think or feel anything while listening to this because it has that nostalgic and element to it. I don't know how to describe it, but if you're a hopeless romantic, you probably love this song. I read through you guys because I'm one of you and this is definitely one of my favorite songs on the album. Who has this man so in love? And where can I sing you flowers and a thank you note? Who are you and where are you? Because I want to thank you because for thanks to you, we have Lucky again. And I'm so grateful for that. Let's talk about face the music. Let's read 
the notes. <clears throat> the way I screamed when this song started playing, I simply couldn't do it anymore. Five songs in and it was already my favorite album and it still holds that place. Um, the second time I listened to it while I read the lyrics, I just started crying. The dense element the music has in contrast to the sad lyrics makes this song a perfect fine line between wanting to dance the night away or get drunk alone in your room. Uh, when I say that every time he could he would sing, I don't want to face the music, but I still want to dance with you. I needed to take a few minutes and breathe. I really mean it. Um, you kind of feel like he's expressing being scared of the outcome, but he's doing it because if he doesn't, he'll regret it. And that perfectly transmits to his voice while singing it. It has that melancholic feeling of not wanting to regret not doing something, but just being terrified to do it. Louis did an amazing job with this song and I don't know if I'll ever recover after reading the lyrics. I kind of feel like I don't want to face the music but I still want to dance with you. It's a metaphor to not wanting to recognize or face the situation they are in, but still wanting to be with that person or to live in that moment with that person so he just lets it be. I don't know if that's what the song is about, but it's so beautiful. I can't, I just, the first time I listened to it, I, I wasn't really paying attention to the lyrics other than I don't want to face the music, but I still want to dance with you. And then I read the lyrics when I was writing the notes and I just wanted to, you know, it's, why would Louis do this to us though? Uh, the next song on the album, by the way, it's called Chicago. You're lonely in Chicago, you can call me, baby. Cause if you're lonely in Chicago, you can call me, baby. Has it been long enough you can't forgive me? Just wasn't meant to be. Let's start reading the notes before I start crying. I would describe Chicago as a beautiful ballad that really helps you tie the album together as most of the songs until now were more fast paced. Um, I honestly don't have much to say about this song, not because it's bad, it's actually really good, right? But because it's very self-explanatory, like the story is yours to read it or to listen to. Um, it really captures a sense of nostalgia and thinking about a person you once used to have in your life and you kind of regret doing things the way you did. Uh, and all those little details you once share with that person and asking if they are alright and hoping they are. Uh, I feel like it can relate to any type of relationship, it being romantic or, you know, a friendship. Because at the end of the day, the song talks about how deeply you connected with that person and how it's sad you don't have them anymore in your life. When the instrumental really starts picking up more and the post chorus and last chorus, you're probably full on crying already. Or at least you feel an emptiness in your chest. And I love when songs are able to transmit the emotions the lyrics are describing. He just really talks about how good of work they did while working on the song. So yeah, I feel like this song is just really beautiful of course but it's really sad and you get that from the sound of this music but also the lyrics and when songs are able to transmit their emotions through you know the music instead of just relying on the lyrics it's the best type of song you know louis is so good at doing that and I'm so proud of him every time he is able to make me cry. This next song is called All This Time is the number seven on the album. And it's an absolute masterpiece. It's late now. He's trying to find a the song is the song I have the most to say on I just because I have such a beautiful interpretation of it I don't know if that's what Louis was intending but let's get right to it <clears throat> he 
his voice in the song is just so good. After the one, two, three, and then Louis starts singing, I just lost hope that I will be fine at the end of the album. This song just fits Louis so perfectly. The direction he took with his voice in the song makes you feel so much that sense of hopelessness. In my interpretation of the song, I feel like it is divided into three parts, almost two points of view. The first two describing the lust of hope, but ha still having a little bit of faith. In the first part of the song, it's like he's just so tired of a situation and starts losing hope because of it. And you know, hope is the worst thing you can lose. And this song makes you feel like he knows that too. And that's why it's so draining for him. And then you go into the second part when the second verse begins and he's talking about a person and how they connect in a similar way but still see each other through something that's blocking them. So the second person is also starting to lose hope. But then, okay, but then the song takes a turn and the third and last part begins where it's described that the little faith they both kept is worth having because of the love they have for each other. And all that pain and energy put into it, it's worth it all this time because of that person. It's so beautiful, fuck. This song is an absolute masterpiece. And I know I'm saying that with each song, but it's just that even without analyzing the lyrics, you still feel the division between between hopelessness and faith and if you're able to capture that without people needing to read too much into it it speaks highly on your writing skills and i'm so proud of louis for that so yeah that's my interpretation of all this time um i don't know if this is the right interpretation you know but i love that way of seeing it like the the, the narrator of the song being like i'm losing hope on us because it's really draining the situation we're in and then the second part being like I know we connect in a similar way and like it's almost like another point of view but I know you're losing hope too like we're both losing hope and then the third part being like but all the pain is worth it because we're together like I love our thing that we have even though it sometimes is painful and it's sometimes very draining I still have faith in us and I love this song so much. It's definitely in my top because of how I interpreted it, interpreted it. Um, and, and, and it's also such a beautiful song and the melody is so beautiful. So yeah, I love all this time so much. The next song on the album is Out of My System. <laughs> I'm only half for what I think I could be Gotta get it out of my system I just love this song so much It has so much vibes of like The soundtrack of an action movie Where the two main characters have so much passion between them Like I don't know how to describe it But I love that shit I love this song so much And I actually did an edit, it's going to be playing here, on the movie uh, Deaths, where it's an enemies to lovers lesbian movie uh, about a spy and the enemy falling in love. And I don't know, I thought it fitted so much, like the main two characters, and I love it. So I did an edit, and it's so cute. But now let's get started on the notes. Where do I even start with this song? This song takes away all the emotional baggage all this time put on you and makes you want to go insane and climb up a table and dance there. It's so good and I can't wait to listen to it live. The sound of the music, the voice, his lyrics, everything is amazing. I loved it. This song is gonna go so hard on tour and I can't wait, you know, because I don't know how I'm gonna do it. But I'm gonna be there because I was on his first solo tour and I have to be in the second one. I don't care what y'all say, I will be there. I don't care how much money it takes me. I will be there listening to Out of My System Life. Yep. Let's talk about a headline now, which is number nine on the album. Uh, you 
like a headline So many reasons why you're not cute so let's just read the little notes i wrote down can i just say i love the rhythm of this song i just feel like the melody really stands on its own and the way he says headline just gets me every time i know this song isn't really about love rather about the ending of a relationship but this song makes me want to experience love and heartbreak and everything above it has a lovely melodic sound that makes you think it's a happy song, but then you pay attention to the lyrics and it's the contrary. Perfect balance, to be honest. Again, I didn't write down a lot about this song because it's just, it stands on its own. Like, it's such a cute song and if you listen to it, you'll probably like it. Um, it's a sad song, again, but it, it, it has a great melody to it, so it's not a sad song in my mind. It's a good song. It makes me want to be, like, just vibing to it while listening to it in the car. But I don't drive, so I can't do that. But yeah, I really like this song. My heart might be broken, but I will be broken down. <sighs> the next song on the album is called Saturdays. song uh. mm -mm. <laughs> let's just read the notes because uh, if i talk about saturdays i'll probably start crying so saturday started playing and i couldn't take it anymore my heart broke into pieces and somehow the same song that broke it was able to fix it the moment the post course and breach started i somehow felt at peace knowing that even with the sad lyrics the song gives a sense of acceptance towards change and welcomes it with hope of for better times. The whole part where the instruments start to pick up and then drop into a huge boom of all the instruments playing deserves a Grammy. In the ending, you get to listen to Louis' voice alone and raw, and it's so beautiful, it ties the whole song together so perfectly. It's a 10 out of 10 song, even if it broke my heart. I just really love it. The next song on the album is Silver Tongues, in case you didn't know, and it's the third single and last single before the album came out. Okay, but this song right here is definitely on everyone stops from the album. This song works so well as a single before the album came out because of the playful tones and happy melodies. I love how it starts as a slow song and completely changes direction that sounds like a soundtrack for a lifetime movie about friends having fun and overcoming the hardships of life with the power of friendships. Um, it's a happy light after the heaviness of Saturdays and both work so well together back to back. It makes me so happy to see Louis have more fun with his songs and adventure in more other genres that fit his styles and voice more. When I listened to this song for the first time, I immediately thought of Shrek. And I mean that in the best way possible. If you take offense to that, you're a horrible human being who doesn't like Shrek. It's such a fun song to listen to and I just absolutely love it. I love fun songs and this is definitely one of the funnest songs Louis has, I think. And I can't wait to listen to this live. It's gonna go so cool, like with the whole audience. I can't wait, I can't wait, I'm so excited. Uh, She's Beauty World, World Class. That's the next song, number 12 on the album. <laughs> This 
song is so different from the album and I think even Louis said it like how it stands on its own I don't remember ex the exact words he used but it's very different from the rest of the album and let me read my notes um I was not expecting the sound of this song at all it really surprised me and I feel like it is very different from any other song on the album and that's why it stands out so much when you first listen to it it's a more dancey pop song, but still keeping some of the same elements from the other song. Like the honest raw lyrics and how that have characterized the album and Louis throughout this project. I was surprised, but definitely not disappointed. A great tune, I just still don't know what it really means. So <laughs> that's why I don't really know what to say other than that. And I do mean that. I feel like this is the, gonna be the shortest commentary for one of the songs. Because I genuinely don't know what the songs mean um, but I still enjoy it and it's very again very different from the rest of the album but I, I enjoy it it's it's fun it's just different common people is in a song on the album and I love it <laughs> describe it it's just so beautiful and nostalgic but let me read my notes first come on people i'll keep forever in my heart it truly feels like a tight hug in arms of someone you love from the lyrics to the chords to the melody to the chorus everything feels so warm a beautiful ballad that explores the concept of being the same as other and experiencing the same emotions like looking outside from within and noticing those similarities and sometimes wanting to go back to those moments that made you who you are now. I love this song so much. Again, I don't have a lot to say about this song, but it's because it's just so beautiful and it makes me so warm inside. And I feel like most people who listen to the song will be able to relate to that part. Like just, I don't know, it feels like a big hug from Louis and I really love this song so much. The next song on the album is Angels Fly. to the song the more I fall in love with it it's just so for cute and I just want to read the notes because I have a, a few thoughts on it can we talk about the pre-chorus in the song and how good Louis boy sound sounds this song is absolutely beautiful how he's trying to calm the other person down and say that they can wait till the next day to talk just to make sure that that person feels better Again, there's no words to describe how much I love this song and it's definitely in my top. And then, if ever star is an eye in the sky, you'll see angels fly. It's probably one of my new favorite Louis lyrics. Another one I really appreciate that just uh, hits close to home is put the pain behind you now, you don't need it anymore. Um, and the way that Louis says it makes me want to give him a tight thank you hug for this. Um, this song is my new therapist and also the reason I need therapy. And I just want to thank him so much for writing the song. Even though um, he didn't write it for me, I just still want to. Uh, yeah, I love the song so, 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 so much. The next song on the album is Holding On To Heartache. It wasn't love at first sight when I first listened to the song, but when I read the lyrics and I listened to it a little bit more, I completely fell in love with it because this past few years, this past two years, yeah, have been a little bit hard on my mental health. And sometimes when I'm in a happy place, like I'm having fun or stuff, I 
start feeling like, why am I having fun? Like, I have so many things to do. I have so many uh, things to get into. And I, and, and I start worrying so much and I start feeling down. And it's just like, I'm, I don't let myself breathe, you know? And I feel like this song is kind of describing that, how you hold on to heartache, you hold on to pain because you've been going through it for a while that you just don't know what else to do. So this song includes, um, this song hits close to home and I feel like it's such a special song and talks about something very important. So yeah, by the way, I didn't write notes on holding on to heartache because I skipped it for some reason when I was writing the notes I didn't write it down like I heard the song when I was writing the notes but I forgot to write it like I don't know but I hope my little explanation is worthy enough so yeah <laughs> so that's the way love goes is the last song on the album is the best closing track Louis could have picked. It's a beautiful song about him giving a friend an advice, hoping they can feel better after a hard breakup. This track is special because I feel like a lot of people will be able to relate to the situation and will hear an advice that sometimes is hard to hear, but in a beautifully written song. It feels like a perfect way to close the album, especially this one that has the name Faith in the Future. It's hopeful advice about moving on and hoping for better times in the form of a song. Throughout the album, we explore this sort of themes of changes, nostalgia, hopelessness, faith, and moving on. And this track closes the theme in the perfect way. I love the song and its angelical vocals and backup vocals. The violin ties this whole track together and makes it even more dreamy. Absolutely in love with how Louis decided to end the album with this one. Um, how I said it is just uh, the themes that Louis uh, touches throughout this whole album really comes down to this whole song and you know it's a more you know slow song and it just really calms you down I don't know I really love it and I think it's a great closing track like I see I listen to the other songs and I feel like there's no other song that could be like a closing track because this one is just so perfect for it so that's the way love goes. That's the end of this album commentary. I loved it so much that this album made me so happy and I hope you guys loved it as much as I did. I hope you like my video, so please like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. That would mean the absolute world to me. Uh, this album is an absolute masterpiece and I'm so proud of Louis for what he did because I know he's so proud of this album and I am too. This is absolutely one of my favorite albums ever. It's just so good. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy my video. So please, 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 please like it. Comment down below which is your favorite song on the album, by the way. I would love to see your opinions on it. My favorite, I feel like it's... All this time, maybe? I don't know. I, I still have to think about it, but please comment down below your opinions and your ideas and your favorite song. Yeah, thank you so much for watching.